because I want to bring in our guest now. She's Harvard University professor Linda Vilmes. She is the co-author of The Three Trillion Dollar War, The True Cost of the Iraq Conflict. Linda, welcome to In Business. You just heard Peter give us the government forecast of $1.1 trillion. Your book title, Three Trillion, is obviously much higher than the government's. Tell us why. Tell us what makes up for the difference. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me. Um, the, what you see in terms of the government figures is simply the tip of the iceberg. That's the combat operations that we've spent to date. And that doesn't include any of the costs going forward. The most important one being the cost of taking care of veterans, both providing disability compensation and health care for the rest of their lives. There are also the cost of uh, replacing all of the equipment that's been used up, of maintaining our troops in Kuwait and Bahrain rain and elsewhere on uh, Navy ships in the area. There's the cost, the sort of hidden costs uh, in excess cost to the Defense Department and an interest we pay and there are economic costs. Uh, when you add on these costs which we have already committed to, you very easily get to three trillion. Uh, but Professor, I want to let me let me jump in really quick. It's it's Peter here. I just want to uh, one fine point of that. You've actually looked and compared this to, for example, the disability payments following World War One and World War Two as well. And that's where you draw this comparison. Uh, well, we've done two things. First of all, it's important to understand that combat costs go on for a very long time. After World War I, the disability compensation costs did not peak until 1969. And after World War II, those disability costs did not peak until the mid-1980s. And they're still going up for the Gulf War and for the Vietnam War. So we can expect that these costs will not peak for another 30 to 40 years. In addition, we've actually analyzed the several hundred thousand veterans who have come back from these wars and we know that the number of uh, disabled, the number of people who are claiming disability compensation, the number of people who are enrolling in VA health care is much, much higher than it was in previous wars. Mm. For example, 10 percent of Vietnam veterans enrolled by this point in VA health care and 44 percent of Iraq veterans have already enrolled. And we're still, of course, paying the bill on the Vietnam War in the form of benefits. Professor, what about the army of contractors that the U.S. has employed in the Iraq war? A lot of operations have been outsourced to private contractors and private companies. What about the cost there? You know, the cost of contractors has been become an embedded cost. Because we have an all-volunteer force, we essentially have a one-to-one -one ratio of contractors doing a whole range of functions. The problem with the contractors has been that there hasn't been uh, sufficient oversight and monitoring. We're well aware of hundreds of uh, millions of dollars in fraud. There have been dozens of indictments and so forth. Uh, but the fundamental issue is that we have privatized large sections of our military activity. If I can just come back, though, to Peter's comment on the cost, I think that Americans are well aware of some of the long-term costs, for example, taking care of veterans. But the real question here are the opportunity costs. The real question is, what would the world have looked like if we had not gone into Iraq in the first place? Would the debt be so high? Would the economic crisis have been so severe? Would oil prices be so high? Would we be stuck in Afghanistan? And I think that quite um, arguably, the answer to all of those questions is no. All right, we thank you for your thoughts, Professor Linda Belmis uh, of Harvard Kennedy School in Cambridge.